Hello guys and welcome back to the channel to this uh, video which has been in my mind to do for quite a while but you know it's only now that I've uh, had the time to sit down to think about it and to put these four watches together which are all uh, as you can already see Swiss automatic chronographs uh, sports style watches uh, they are all based on the Etta Valju 7750 chronograph movement um, and this is a group comparison um, I guess in a sense a group review but all of these watches I have already uh, reviewed individually and I'll put links up to uh, those particular videos as we go through uh, so just as a group comment uh, uh, these are the common features they have. Uh, so that movement, the 7750 or the Salita SW500 as it may be, uh, beats at the 28800 uh, beat per hour uh, frequency. They, they are all 25 joules, so the, the companies have not modified the number of joules. Uh, all of these watches have screw down uh, case backs, screw down crowns, uh, and they all have sapphire crystal. Uh, the, the loom in application are all super luminova as far as I have uh, been able to confirm. Uh, all the bracelets are metal with the exception of the ceramic uh, middle in the Tag Heuer. Uh, and they all have solid end links of course at this uh, type of price range. Unfortunately all these watches actually also have push pin uh, adjustments for the bracelets which uh, uh, I guess if you look at the more modern versions of uh, a lot of these models they will have screws uh, definitely the Oris and the Amiga and current uh, iteration will have screws for the bracelet adjustments okay so let's go through uh, what we have here so this is uh, uh, yeah that you know my <laughs> first review actually the the very first video I did was uh, this watch uh, and uh, this is uh, of course a Tag Heuer Formula One Caliber 16 uh, this model is CAZ 2012 really um, the MSRP for this particular model is uh, 3100 USD as far as I've uh, been able to ascertain uh, but of course you, you kind of pay less uh, on, on retail and even less on grey market. Um, the weight of this watch is 190 grams. Uh, as previously mentioned, it is a 44 diameter, uh, millimeter diameter case uh, at 15 millimeter thickness. The water resistance rating is 200 meters. And this movement, uh, Tag Heuer, uh, it, they aren't very direct about it, uh, but as I understand it, it is either an Eta or a Salita. They, they, you know, they, they've stated that it can be either that is uh, included in their particular watches. Uh, so I haven't bothered opening this up and I'm not going to do so to find out which one exactly is in it. Um, now power reserve, this uh, is 42 hours and actually this is slightly less than the other three watches uh, and is the kind of the base power reserve of the movement. What else can I say about this one? The, the bezel is a non-rotating ceramic insert tachymeter bezel as you can see that nice fine tachymeter print uh, and uh, the other thing of note I will mention is that the, the the class is, uh, is pressed metal. It is not a solid machine piece. Uh, it is unfortunately a pressed metal piece, uh, which is something um, I don't know how Tech Hoyer get away with it. They, they still release uh, pressed metal for uh, their watches around this price range, or at least a lot of their models. Um, the notable things about this particular model is, uh, is the ceramic, uh, both in the bezel and in the uh, in the bracelet centers here uh, that's ceramic uh, in the middle uh, and that's an anthracite dial uh, that's something they've noted about the actual material of the dial that gray uh, kind of uh, uh, I guess reflective sunburst type of look uh, which is a form of carbon anthracite okay moving on to the Oris uh, Aquis Titan that I have here uh, the model number is a little bit too long for me to read out but I'll put uh, a caption to show you the model number. This as far as I've researched retails for 3200 USD so as a comparison it's roughly comparable in the the price range of the, the Tag Heuer on the first one. 
uh, and of course uh, retail would be less that you pay. Uh, this weighs uh, 120 grams which is very pleasingly light uh, because it is a titanium watch, it is not a steel watch. Uh, this is 44 millimeters also in diameter. It is 16 millimeters uh, thick. Uh, the water resistance rating for this dive style watch of course is uh, 300 meters for the Oris Aquis range. Um, this movement uh, is uh, documented to be an ETA 7750 on Oris. Um, the power reserve somehow they have actually increased it, managed to get it up to a documented 48 hours. I haven't tested it uh, exhaustively to prove that but that's what they have documented. So that this one uh, has, has a higher uh, reserve than the base movement. Um, what else can I say about this? It has a you know a mild dome on the sapphire so that's a slight difference to the flat sapphires of many watches. Uh, the, the bezel is uh, steel insert unidirectional um, rotating dive style bezel of course with the minute markings on it. Uh, the dial is a you know black wave pattern you've seen that on my previous review if you've seen if you've watched that before. Uh, the other things um, I guess the negatives I would say is again like the Tag Heuer this older model is um, is pressed metal at least for that that housing there and as well as that catch this these pieces are a little bit more solid uh, but as I understand from people who are into engineering you can also still achieve that type of um, uh, that type of metal with pressing. Okay so that's a slight uh, negative uh, uh, on that particular part of this watch uh, and the other thing I've you know heard people complain about is that the lugs are proprietary you can't swap that out for NATO if you uh, had a tendency to want to do that. Um, this is the only watch out of these four that have uh, that has a display back so there you go that's the uh, mineral glass display back with the famous or that, that rather signature Oris red rotor. Okay, so that's the Oris Aquis Titan chronograph for you. Uh, let's put that back in the position. Okay, so up next we have, of course, the Omega Seamaster Professional 300M Diver. Uh, in a, I've gone into the details of this watch uh, before. Uh, the retail, uh, when it was in production and being sold regularly, was 4,100 USD. Uh, still available on grey market and many retailers when I've looked up so you know you still can get this uh, pre-ceramic uh, Omega Seamaster uh, the current models are ceramic insert as many of you will know this is the heaviest watch in this uh, collection it is 205 grams in weight uh, it is a 41.5 millimeter diameter uh, that uh, which is very commonly used in Seamaster I think the current Seamaster basic chronographs are still that diameter. It is the thickest watch as well. It is 17 millimeters thick on the side uh, from the bottom to the top of the dome sapphire glass. 300 meters of course for uh, for, for Omega Seamasters. Uh, they, they really all contemporary ones are that water rating. Uh, this one has 44 hours documented power reserve so slightly higher than the base movement but certainly not as high as the Oris. Um, this is the only watch that is a chronometer in this group and you can see on the dial there uh, it is uh, displayed that that term is displayed on the dial chronometer and it does keep excellent time plus one second a day as long as I have ran this on average. Um, what is uh, the negatives I can mention? Uh, the only one I would say is that uh, this particular you know the, the bracelet is so well known so stylish, something I've, I've really loved and enjoyed. Uh, but the way that they have made this bracelet and clasp, you know, beautiful solid clasp, but no micro adjust adjustment capability. There is a dive extension, uh, but there is no way to you know just change it by uh, one, two millimeter at a time. Um, unlike many watches, you can kind of adjust with a go, on the go with a toothpick or a, you know tip of a uh, paper clip. You know these ones. Uh, I'll just show you quickly. You know there is a slight micro adjustment capability here on the clasp. Uh, the Omega clasp does not have that. Lastly, I have the Mont Blanc Sport 3273N. 
uh, you may have gathered already that I've just uh, that I've uh, ordered these in MSRP. So this MSRP is rather high at four thousand five hundred. Uh, but on grey retail and on realistic retail, you will pay considerably less. Uh, and in reality, this will retail typically at the consumer end less than the Amiga Seamaster. So really, maybe you would put this second from the top in terms of how much you. Uh, can get this for. This is 41.5 millimeter diameter case. Uh, it is the thinnest case here. It is 14.5 millimeters, so pleasingly uh, thin for a uh, Valgy 7750 movement, you know, and I'd be interested again if you know of any uh, watches that achieve a thinner uh, profile with this particular movement. Um, 200 meters on the water resistance in this one. It is an Etta 7750. Uh, 28800 uh, of course like everything else and this one also achieves a uh, uh, power reserve rating of uh, 48 hours much like the Oris was able to document. Um, what are the negatives that I've noted about this? Um, again no micro adjustment like the Omega because this is a different type of class this is not the standard deployment this is a butter butterfly deployment and you, you really can't uh, put in a micro adjustment with this type of deployment. It is uh, has the advantage of uh, hiding the class very well so you really you see almost all uh, contiguous uh, bracelet and so that's a that's a type of a look that it achieves but you can't micro adjust it um, and this one also doesn't have a extension, a dive suit extension uh, unlike uh, all the other ones here have extensions built into the clasp uh, but you know this one is, isn't really marketed as a diver it does have a steel uh, insert unidirectional uh, rotating bezel and it does have a screw down crown with good water rating but it's not marketed as a diver okay so that's the overall uh, grip look you know what uh, have I enjoyed particularly and noted particularly about these watches well I think I think the Tag Heuer is the most sporty uh, of the bunch. It really has the most um, sports identity. Clearly, Heuer uh, was involved in race timing, and this one does take a very uh, race-looking design. It's very edgy uh, on the construction. Uh, in the case, uh, it has the most red highlights of any of these watches, including uh, you can see there on the. Uh, the crown they've actually in included a, a red highlight as well as the start stop button for the chronograph uh, at the two o'clock position uh, it is also i think the most durable in terms of the thickness and weight of the case and, uh, the omega is heavier but this one just has uh, more muscular construction and not to mention it has this ceramic insert uh, the, the only watch here that has a ceramic insert for the bezel uh, that is clearly a lot more resistant to scratching uh, than a steel insert would be as you can already see on the Oris how scratched up that is this is a well used piece uh, the Oris I think is the best performing uh, as a diver strictly speaking uh, it is it really is only the, the Oris and the Omega that is that are marketed as dive watches this one has a helium release valve if you uh, <laughs> felt you ever go to the depth that you need to use that for the watch um, it has that, that 300 meter water rating, it has that, that nice muscular uh, construction, that unidirectional bezel uh, and it also has the best loom out of uh, all of this and that's uh, going to be a uh, function of the amount of loom that is applied to both the hands and the hour markers and you can watch my uh, loom video for more details on that uh, if you wish. Um, so I think, strictly speaking, this this is the best performing uh, as a diver. The Mont Blanc, uh, I think, is the most versatile because it is uh, lighter than than the the Omega and the Tag Heuer at 170 grams. Uh, it is the thinnest uh, Valjoux 7750 in this bunch and uh, the thinnest one I've come across. Uh, it has a you know that that charming old world style look. Uh, not to mention that bracelet that's quite contiguous. I think this is the, the most versatile of all and the one that fits most comfortably in uh, more formal environments uh, as an opinion. That's obviously a subjective thing, uh, but you know the, the thickness is objective. 
And then lastly, I think without doubt, this uh, is the best watch uh, of the bunch. I love the Omega style. I, you know, that case design, those lugs, the scallop bezel, that Seamaster watch face, skeletonized hands, wave dial, that awesome bracelet, um, you know, and not to mention, uh, this is a chronometer, not unlike everything else here. Uh, I think clearly, you know, there's not much controversy for me to say that this one is the best uh, of this uh, group comparison. Uh, it is um, uh, the best style overall, and I think also in terms of uh, quality and craftsmanship, it does edge out the rest. Uh, but that's that's Omega for you, isn't it? That's that's really uh, what they've established themselves uh, to achieve over the last decade plus, uh, particularly I think, uh, but you know, longer than that as well. There we have the uh, there we have it for the good comparison. I uh, hope that's been enjoyable. Uh, look at these bunch of watches. I think this is possibly the highest value video. Uh, that I've put together if you add up the MS MSRP of these uh, four watches. Um, I'll try to include a table of the statistics uh, as I have for my group comparisons at the end of the video, so check that out. Uh, thank you guys for watching this far. Uh, subscribe if you want to keep in touch and as always, I uh, will catch you guys next time.